Hey gang, all right, so this is going to be uh, the go live uh, demo of the week. I'm not, gonna, I'm not gonna do a Zoom meeting, I'm gonna do this instead. And what we've got today is a couple of peppers, and I'm quickly gonna draw and take you through the first layer of paint. Uh, and so without, I'm just gonna hop right in. Uh, and one of the one of the things that a lot of a lot of you guys ask is um, about measuring, and one of the things that I want to stress in this sketch that I'm going to do is that I don't measure. I check angles, but I don't measure. Uh, I like to get a spontaneous uh, look and feel that you can't really get. Um, while measuring. Start my first drawing very, very loose. Lots of lines. I'll get rid of them later. No, don't worry if there's too many lines. And that's my layout. And so one of the things that I like to do after I get a layout is to take a dry paper towel and wipe it down so I can barely see it. And then I'm gonna come back in and draw again. A little darker this time. Now you can, you can draw pretty quickly when you're drawing things uh, like peppers. They're not that, uh, you know, complicated. If I was drawing an, an antique coffee grinder, I might be taking a little bit more time. I like to think that this pepper has got back problems and that there's a real big hump uh, right there that I just that I just put in. Some days that bothers them and some days it doesn't. And I say it like that because I'm going to exaggerate it now slightly because of that. And he's kind of hunching over. Maybe he doesn't have back problems. Maybe he's whispering something in the ear of the other pepper. If you don't, you know, if you have back problems and you're scarred by that idea and you're not going to buy the painting, okay, he doesn't have back problems. He's whispering into the ear of this other pepper. He's saying somebody's gonna stuff you with rice and ground meat. <laughs> I was just thinking about making some stuffed peppers with the rest of these, so that, that's why now they're all, they're all scared for their lives. I'm gonna draw this pretty quickly. It, it doesn't really matter if it's exact because it's a demo. So, you know, you guys watching me spend two hours trying to get this drawing right, it's not really gonna help you very much. And the point is to get the drawing right when you have a lot of time and no one's looking. some of the form that comes around the pepper. It's a shadow right here. I like, I want to get that in.
That's just where the highlights are gonna be. And then there's a big old stem that this one has. Probably not gonna paint the stem today. Just get the orange of the peppers in. All right, so that's gonna be uh, good enough for our drawing purposes. I might have done one more uh, drawing if I wasn't trying to keep this video short. Um, but again, peppers really aren't that complicated and so they, they just simply don't need it. Uh, and so we're gonna jump right into uh, paint. And um, we'll get a shot in there in a little bit of, uh, of the palette, but I'm, I'm gonna do, rather than keep moving the camera to show you guys the palette, I'll just talk. I mean, looking at me, it, you know, mix orange uh, really isn't gonna do much. Let me go to a separate color mixing video at some point, but, but not today. But right now I'm just mixing up um, a dark color for the for the shadow side of the pumpkin. It's gonna be basically uh, orange with a little bit of purple mixed in. Pepper. Pepper, what did I call it, a pumpkin? Mm -hmm. It's orange, everything's orange. So. So this is orange with a touch of purple in it. That's the color that I'm, Diox purple. And I'm just gonna uh, put this color everywhere I see it. The Shadows have a lot of alizarin in them. They're more intense than what I see them. But I just want to get uh, a little bit of this placed. In here. So we're working in what I always call strips or bands of value. And the point of that is to slowly and deliberately place colors that I see. Now in here, it's a little greener. And so I'm gonna add a little green to my mixture and change the, I don't know if you guys can see that or not, I don't know if it's showing up, but it's just a little bit of greener. It's a little greener than the color that's next to it, just to change the, and I'm gonna look for anywhere else I see that, and I do see some of that green color on this side right over here, so I'm gonna put that in. And just look around for it, see if it shows up anyplace else before I clean my brush. I see a little of it in here. Same greenish color. And a touch of it in here. Uh, none of it in here. This is all really warm right here, so I'm not gonna use any of the green color. That's a little cooler. Um, and so now I'm gonna clean the brush and go back and mix a bit of a even warmer uh, red and hit some of these areas that are a little hotter. Not too many, it's enough. And we'll go back to the orange.
These are still the darks. So I'm still on the, the dark side. I'm not really into the half tones yet. These are all still pretty much shadow colors that I'm working with. Uh, you'll see the lights when I get to them. They'll really jump out from here. That's a little greenish up there. So I want to make sure I get that right. Just mixing a touch of sap green into the orange to make it I'm just going to start to get a little bit brighter. Adding a touch of red. All right, putting out some, some extra color that I think I might need. And I'm putting out, I'm going to those Rembrandt colors. I mentioned in Instagram post, Rembrandt colors are extremely rich and powerful, especially the cadmiums. And they, um, they cover a lot of area. So I'm gonna take the Rembrandt Cad Red and just see if it does a better job of covering. If you notice some of the areas in here, they didn't cover with paint as well as I would have liked. So let's just see. One of the tricks to working on a panel is just getting that first layer of paint on. So that's working better already. Now I gotta get this mess out of there. because this is getting this a little dark around this edge right here. So I'm going to add a little sap green to the orange.
Now, I'm gonna take a big, clean, dry brush and just get some of this excess paint out of the way that I put on when it wasn't um, covering properly. So I just wanna lift some of this out of the way. I need to get brighter in here in a minute. jump. I'm going to take a lot of yellow. And there's a lot of a lot of yellow in this. And we're going to, I'm just going to indicate where a lot of that yellow is. So there's a yellow here. on some form of anatomy. Yeah, that'll happen. Alright, I'm going to switch to one of my softer brushes now. searching for a brush that'll make the stroke that I want. No, that's not it. This one is pulling the paint off the canvas in sort of a disturbing way. No, that's not going to do it.
I'll clean the brush and I'm just going back in and being pretty delicate with trying to blend in some of these. It's really sliding on this panel for some reason. I don't really know why. But this one's particularly slippery. And this is a two day process. So everything I'm doing today is with the intention of having it dry tomorrow and then working over it. I'm not an a la prima painter. I'll do it all in one sitting. I don't see the need to try to do it all in one sitting. You know, unless you're, you know, unless you're outdoors doing, you know, plain air study. Some people are, are great for plain air painting. Other people, you know, not so much. I went plain air painting years and years ago. You know, went out into the mountains, set up the easel, wind blows it over, and you're picking up dirt out of your paint. And, you know, that, if that wasn't fun enough, then, you know, after about the fifth or sixth person came up to me and said, what are you doing? Uh, I got to the point where I just wanted to go, what the hell does it look like I'm doing? So I found that studio painting was more suited to my personality, which just means working by myself. But peppers don't argue with me. At least not anymore. Right your now on the right men. <laughs> they used to argue. And so I'm going to take some yellow and some white. And just get a little lighter. As you can see the one, two, three, the bands are strips of value. And again, you know, I'm not gonna leave it like this. If you look at my finished work, it's, it's smooth, but this is just, you're building forms and making things round. And, and that's really what I'm, what I'm doing right now, is just trying to make it round. All right, let's get over to that other pepper. There's some areas that are really red. Let's see if we can do a bit of a better job of getting those strips and bands in on the second one than we did on that first one. The first one got a little sloppy. It turned out all right, but in the middle there. So let's see if we can just keep this a little bit more cohesive in structure. Maybe go a little 
little slower. So here's a trick that I, I do sometimes if I make a mistake. So the value jump is a little bit too much. I can get one between them. And so I'm gonna mix a value between the two and drop it in there. It's a little darker at the top there yet. Get that in there. And we got to get a little bit brighter in there. Before we get brighter, I want to do some of what's going on in the background here. Just add that. Okay, now we have to get brighter yet. I'm gonna add some white and some yellow. And come in for some of these real bright spots. dark up in here I want to get. And I'm going to come in with a small brush and some, I'm going to clean the brush, the brush has too much paint on it. I mean, and just in looking at this, these some of these areas are just a little too rough. They don't need to be this rough. Let me come in and smooth them out a bit. And I'm just taking a clean, dry brush and just angling my brush strokes down into one direction. I'm not really moving any paint around. I'm just getting the raised areas of paint off the canvas.
Well, at this point, I would stop on these peppers and let them dry and then come in the next day. But because I'm not doing this tomorrow, I'm going to add some bright highlights today to the peppers. Come back in with that orange and purple mixture. Mm. And I'm just going to have a little bit of fun in here and put a little cat red. I'll do the same thing to the other side because there's definitely some Wanna talk about the election? No, we're not talking about politics. We don't want to chase anybody away watching this so that they're not focused on the news. That's true. So, no, we're going to stay. We're just going to focus on these peppers. Happy little peppers. Like Bob Ross reference there, if you guys hate Bob Ross. Everybody hates Bob Ross now. I don't hate Bob Ross. I could just never figure out how he painted with a squirrel in his pocket. Or on his head. Yeah, it was just... I watched him when I was a kid. It wasn't until I... I didn't realize that Bob Ross didn't know what he was doing until I got into art school and all my teachers told me that. When I was, you know, when I was younger, I thought it was really good. All right, we gotta get a highlight right in here. I don't recommend putting highlights in while a painting is wet, because as you can see, they're just smeared. You just wait till it's dry, put them in tomorrow. But this is where they would go. So that's why I put it in right now. Because like I said, I'm gonna I've got two of these that I just finished. Pepper, Pepper paintings, I mean. Um, 
both in my Etsy and big cartel shops. I prefer the big cartel shop. You get a better deal in, your, in the big cartel shop than you do in the Etsy shop because they don't charge uh, fees. They don't hit me with fees. You pay them one flat rate in big cartel a month. And they take PayPal, so it's, it's legit. It's nice and easy. And I've got two of these that'll be to finish pepper paintings. Uh, this little demo might be in the big cartel shop, depending on how it comes out. We'll see. I like it. No promises. Uh, a couple things that we do have to do here uh, is get, and so I'm gonna take a very dark color, um, which is, you know, lizard and crimson and Prussian blue make a very, very dark black without having to use black. And just watch what happens to this painting. Let me get a really dark color in there. It should be jumping off the canvas. Except it's not a canvas, it's a panel. And again, normally I do this part also when the painting is dry, so that if I make a mistake, I can wipe it off. Since the painting is wet, if I make a mistake, I'm screwed. So I'm just basically right now just kind of drawing. All right, now. And there's the shadow. And if I did this right, I should be able to use all the color that's already on there and just pull it down. No, I'm not. I don't like that. Let's mix in a little, a little raw umber. That's better. All right, well, I guess we have to get the stem in there if we're gonna keep going. You're at 40 minutes. Um, I think we can go an hour, right? I'm pretty sure we can go an hour, at least on Instagram. One stem, and this stem is actually facing the other direction, but I don't like, it's facing away from me, so I'm not gonna, I'm gonna change the direction of the stem, because I can do that, because I'm in charge. All right, now for the stem, I'm gonna take, uh, you guys, some of you guys are color crazy. 
So I'm gonna take a little burnt umber and a little um, phthalo green, which is a color I, I don't normally use. Um, unless you're painting the safety vest of a New York City transit worker, very seldom do you need phthalo green or your landscape painter. But if you're home painting still lifes, I find that you don't really use phthalo green very much. Certain outfits, if you're a portrait painter, you need it. But for the most part, sap green will do just fine. That's my normal green on my palette is sap. Now, one color combination I'm going to get into that I that I like a lot is to take that, because I've got some phthalo green now, I'm going to add it to cat yellow. Oh, too bright. Not gonna try to do I'm not gonna do too much work on these stems. Just put a little color on them. Again painting from dark to half tone to light to highlight. There's a big white spot in the top of this stem right up in here. And there's a lot of detail in there that I'm going to ignore. Um, because I wouldn't paint it while it was wet anyway. I'd probably just do this. And then fix it the next day. But for today, that's, that's good enough for today. Um, now, uh, background. We got to put a quick background on it and then we're going to call this one done. Okay, and I'm not going to put a lot of a background on it, it's just a little bit of a background. But I always clean my palette in between areas. So if I, if I work on, if I'm working on three different things, let's say if I'm doing more than just peppers, I'm pe painting peppers, apples, and mushrooms, I would clean my palette between each different set of groups and I clean it again between the background um, just so that the colors like, don't mix in. Um, you know, if I was painting mushrooms, for example, these oranges of the peppers, they're not gonna work too well. So. And like the paintings that I have over here, I think I'm gonna put, I'm just gonna see what a, a nice little phthalo turquoise background looks like on this. See if it works.
a car on the other side. Sometimes I get a lot of questions as to why I use this type of background as opposed to a black background or filling it in with paint or a gray background. Well, if you think about it, how many paintings have you seen on Instagram or, or right here on YouTube or, or anywhere that have black backgrounds and gray backgrounds and, and so, you know, I try to do something that's a little different. I think this needs, make that a little, I gotta clean this edge up a little bit here. And I'm gonna add a little white to that mixture. Make it a little bit brighter, just a little. one of those right here and I'm not going to finish this whole thing I'm just showing showing you guys how I would do this how I put some of these colors in here and I think that basically is about what I wanted what I want to say with this with this still life. Um, we ran through the darks, the halftones, the lights, put a little bit of a strokey background on it. I would soften this up, but I don't need to uh, right now. Um, and this basically says uh, what I wanted to say. Now, I think I might wanna make this, actually, now that I'm looking at this, I do wanna make this sparkle just a bit. see some areas where there's a chance to just get some lights in here. All right, we're gonna call that done. Well, it's not done, but the, the demo is done. Uh, if you guys like my stuff, please, uh, please check out, uh, follow me on Instagram. Uh, on Instagram, there's links to the, the big cartel shop, the Etsy shop. I got a Patreon, so if you liked what you see, uh, buy something. Uh, we, you know, sales are what keeps me doing these. Thanks everybody for watching. Take care. Good night.